In this video, we'll give you five cheap running backs that could help you win your league. I'm Alan Zislowski, along with Joe Bartle. Joe, who's going to be your first league-winning cheap running back? When I'm thinking cheap running back, I'm thinking round 10 and later. We've, we've heard all the news about Cordell Patterson. Rashad Penny used to be that in March. That's not the case anymore. So we have to dive a little bit deeper. I really think Rashad White actually has a good chance to be able to return value, certainly way above where his ADP is going. We know what pass catching backs can do with Tom Brady as your quarterback, but I think Rashad White is more than capable of taking on a rushing workload too. I'm not saying he's going to surpass Leonard Fournette, but think about the backs that have had some success with Tom Brady with the Buccaneers. There's been the Keyshawn Vaughns, the Ronald Joneses, uh, even Giovanni Bernard at times too, right? I, I think Rashad White is the best part of all of those players. He's a really good receiving back. So long as he can do that pass protection stuff that we know is really important for Tom Brady, that's going to be the key. And I think by all accounts from college, he seems to be that type of player. So I love Rashad White. All right. My first league winning running back that you can get on the cheap is going to be Kenny Gainwell. He's still routinely going in the double digit rounds and nobody likes Miles Sanders yet. Everybody likes the offensive line for the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going back to 2019 when Gainwell was at Memphis. He had more receptions than Antonio Gibson and obviously he led the team in rushing. I think this is a player that in the preseason is going to start to rise and rise and rise. I'm passing on Miles Sanders. If I want a piece of this uh, committee, it's going to be Kenny Gainwell. Who's your next league winning cheap running back? Yeah, I, I think it's Gus Edwards. And I know, I know he might not play week one. If, the same way that we did that thing with Javante Williams last year where, hey, he can win you the league if he plays in week 13. There's some value to me with Gus Edwards. We know J.K. Dobbins is coming back from a pretty serious injury. What happens if they are out Dobbins for an extended time? Now my ego gets hurt because I'm a huge Dobbins guy overall, especially if you're in leagues. And this is really important about knowing the settings where you can put somebody on IR or who will uh, not count as a roster spot if they're on a pup situation. That's a perfect landing spot for Gus Edwards that I think you can easily talk yourself into being a RB2 if Dobbins were out. And it's the same type of deal that we do with Alexander uh, Alexander Madison. Like everyone understands that premise. It's the same type of deal. Don't talk to me about Mike Davis or uh, Tyler Beatty or uh, any of these other guys, right? I think Gus Edwards clearly fits into a very specific need for a team that does running really well. And people were pushing him up to like the fourth and fifth round with the Dobbins injury last year. I think that you can mm -hmm. probably get Edwards in the last round of your draft. And I love that strategy of everyone has an IR nowadays. There was a time when no one used IR, but with COVID, everyone has one or two slots. I would try to sneak him on there. I'm actually going to write that one down. I like that a lot. Uh, my next cheap league winning running back is going to be Khalil Herbert on the Chicago Bears. Uh, there's a lot of red flags piling up with David Montgomery. Him fielding special teams punts is never a good sign. New coaching staff not committed to David Montgomery, and he's an unrestricted free agent next year. They're going to want to see what they have with Khalil Herbert. And if you rostered him last year, he gave you three 100-yard games just when you thought your season was over. He booed you back up. So he's a player I've been routinely getting in the 12th round. I think he could be a cheap league winner. So the only red flag about uh, Khalil Herbert is the entire Bears offense and organizations. How about David? and Pierce for the Texans. Like, we have this thing now for the last three years where Marlon Mack is supposed to be your savior. When Marlon Mack is your fantasy savior, you might as well just quit, right? Like, I just haven't had a lot of success going that route, and I know just about everyone who's done a fantasy draft for the last three years can say the same thing. I know we're, we're getting in love with the sexy running back, and he's a rookie. We haven't seen him before. And Florida didn't really seem to love Damian Pierce either, but Florida's done a lot of weird stuff in college. And I, I'm not ready to say, oh yeah, for sure, Damian Pierce is going to be a guy that is only uh, doing two down stuff, whether it be a pass catcher or a runner. I think he has that three down workload possibility. There's a lot of value for it. Again, I'm excluding Marlon Mack from this conversation, who technically could fit into that category because we've seen it and we've been unimpressed by it. Pierce is athletic enough, and so long as the Texans are committed to having that workload be a thing, I think we can find some fancy goodness. Daryl Henderson on the Rams is going way too late mm. uh, versus Cam Akers. This is just an ADP play. We've seen Sean McVay come out and say that these are co-starters. I'm not under any delusions that Daryl Henderson's fragile, but when he is on the field, he can produce. And if you are doing a wide receiver heavy strategy or you're going after a vanity quarterback or tight end, Daryl Henderson's a player that probably is going to slot in as a top 15, top 18 running back week one or any week that he's projected to, to have a significant role. I've been rostering him after ignoring him 
him all offseason. If you were to say what's the biggest fade right now for me, Cam Akers might be in that equation. I, I was not a huge Cam Akers fan to begin with on his prospect profile. Give us a few guys that you can get at the end of drafts if I decide to go wide receiver heavy that can give me some juice at the running back position. I know everyone's going to cringe at this, but I actually think Trey Sermon's okay enough value. He's the same thing. Again, we understand this concept with Alexander Mass that if Dalvin Cook were to go down, Madison gets you pretty good production. Tyrion Davis Price will not do that. I'm telling you right now that people think just because he's a third round pick, he's going to be good. He's not. I would sooner say he's like a worse version of Brian Robinson, which right now for the commanders is just a goal line back. That's Trey Sermon can be your starting running back for the 49ers if he's able to uh, get out of the Kyle Shanahan doghouse. So I, I'm I'm convinced that for around 14 and later selection, Trey Sermon is the 49er back I'd rather have. And my last running back that I, I think actually has some value from a later on perspective is Keontae Ingram for the Cardinals. Again, we're falling in love with the sexy rookie running back. He hasn't disappointed us before, but there is some truth to it. I mean, we look at James Conner's career. He's had one good year with the Steelers, then hampered by injuries, one good year with the Cardinals. Well, they kind of have to have Ingram be the guy if Connor were to get injured again. And I know there's a few other backs that are around, but Ingram has the explosiveness. We actually seen training camp thus far. He's been a bit more of a pass catcher. So long as he can do that pass protection stuff, that's where it really is going to depend on the value for him. So I like Keonta Ingram, especially in like rookie drafts as well, too, where you're looking for a late second round, third round guy. You could do a lot worse. And we've had a lot of success targeting these rookie running backs that have fallen into the right spot. Keonta Ingram might be just the perfect fit. If you like videos like this, consider hitting the like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications when we put up new video content every single day. And right now, the Rotowire Draft Kit is live, and you can see it for free for two days. Get a peek behind our paywall. No credit card required. You just put in your email, and you're off and running. And after two days, it just lapses. You don't have to cancel anything. Go to rotowire.com forward slash try.